Good morning. Welcome to our Easter Sunday Church Online here in Tumbridge Wells Baptist Church. We're going to begin our time together right here in the community larder. I would like to invite you to say these words after me. Christ is risen. 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 He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Let us celebrate together the greatest day in history. Greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Singing out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Singing out, Jesus is alive He's alive Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound. 
and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face oh praise the of the We're back in the sanctuary and this time we're not on our own we're with other members of our church family so you're really welcome this morning to be here in our new sanctuary worshiping together the children and young people have got some exciting things to do uh, Rachel was suggesting that you may want to do uh, these things together so Kids Club is by post and it's where you're going to be looking at the cross. Virtual Sunday School, I think you're going to have to look through the videos and see the Easter story. 
and Epic have an Easter devotional and, and Rachel was thinking that would be really good to do together as a family. And not forgetting the little ones, there's some lovely colouring activities that Youth for, Youth for Christ have done too. So all those details will be found at the bottom of your screen. And I think you've been sent them already as well. So I hope you have a really good time. Flair, you're staying in the service this morning, so we hope that you have a good time joining us in worship today. Coffee is going to happen, even though some of us are here. So if you are at home watching the service and normally join the Zoom coffee, please continue to do that. It will be 10 minutes after the service finishes. Over to you, Duncan. Thank you. As we come out of lockdown, there may be a few of you who would like to get into a small group or start a small group. I would just like to invite you to do that. And if you would like any support or resources, we would be happy to do that. The purpose of the small group of getting in twos and threes is to encourage one another in our Christian faith and our day-to-day -day living. On this Easter Sunday, Dillis and I would love to pray for you. And what we'd love you to do, if you would like that, is to just text us on our phone and let us know very briefly what you would like prayer for. And then after the service, we'll get together and pray for you. The number is... 07-5810-737777. So this is for those that are watching the service live. If you watch it later, then unfortunately we won't be able to uh, answer the phone. At this Easter time, we've got so much to be thankful for. And I thought it might be a lovely idea to offer you the opportunity to give thanks to God through giving an offering. And so if you'd like to do that, there's two ways you could do it. One is you could do it on your phone and the details will come up on the screen. Uh, please note the maximum is £20. Or if you'd like to, you can do it online through your bank and those details will come up. They'll also come up at the end of the service uh, and they'll also come up next week. So you can prayerfully consider that. So we're going to hear from the Larder team now about what they're looking forward to when they come out of lockdown. I'm looking forward to uh, having a barbecue with my family, preferably on the beach. I'm Just looking forward to seeing my sister-in-law. To meeting our lovely knit and stitch ladies in person again. To sitting outside in a restaurant garden looking out to sea. To seeing my grandchildren again to seeing my mum and hugging her and hugging anybody I want to hug who lets me. Getting together with my family. Singing with the choir that I've been locked down practicing with. That was so exciting to hear, wasn't it? I wonder if you had any of the similar um, wishes or dreams that, uh, that was shared just now. Shrupti has interviewed Mary and so we're going to hear from them uh, now and then they are going to be praying as a prayer warriors group straight after that. So over to you Shrupti. Good morning Mary, happy Easter and thank you for joining us on Easter Sunday church service today. Um, uh, it's really lovely to see you, you know. Uh, because uh, I know we meet mostly Friday, but, uh, you know, having you on Easter Sunday uh, is a great privilege. Good morning, Tripti. Happy Easter to you. And thank you. Uh, thank you for everyone for giving this wonderful opportunity. And I'm really, uh, you know, glad to be here. So how are you doing, Mary? I'm doing good by the grace of God, Tripti. How are you? Yeah, good, good. We are doing good. And how is your family? Are they all okay? Yeah, we are doing good. We are doing very well by the grace of God. Um, we are just having an opportunity today. So, uh, you know, to share, uh, we thought it's good to share your faith journey uh, on Resurrection Day. So I, I, I really wanted to like know about your faith journey, how the resurrection power and hope is impacted in your life you know and it's really good to hear that your faith journey yeah <clears throat> yes uh, um well actually you know um jesus said uh i'm the way 
truth and the life. Uh, the resurrection, like, you know, for me, is, uh, the resurrection is a sign of the God's great power. So Jesus himself is the only one who can give us a new life. No one uh, else holds the power because, you know, he gives us a great strength and peace. Uh, in my life, like, you know, really, like, you know, I'm really thankful to God, you know, uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, for the last whole year, like, you know, I was uh, really worried and, you know, always used to be like, you know, uh, uh, I used to be think a lot, like, you know, what's going to happen, but, you know, God resurrection, like, you know, his, his word, like, you know, uh, his, uh, his, his word and his promises, like, you know, always gives me, encouraging me in day to day in day to day my life so he he you he always just to gives us hope and a future and he provides all that we need to live uh, in his uh, in his, in this life because our god like you know uh, he's our savior and he's the truth and he's the bread of life and uh, with the hope like you know he's always there because when we have a good relationship with jesus he teaches hope and calmness in our you know midst of um, you know uh, fear or you know any uh, um, obstacles in our lives uh, that I really experienced in my life uh, throughout this journey. That's great because uh, and we are so blessed because we have an awesome God you know the promises we have in him you know he's so yeah. faithful and that's why you know on this resurrection Sunday you know it's really really important that yeah uh, for us to know the hope we have is only in him. So thank you for sharing that, Mary. What actually Easter means to you? Uh, well, you know, Easter uh, is a, is a, it's a really like, you know, we are, we have, to, I mean, I have to say like, you know, I'm really uh, very, uh, it's, I can't say, uh, it's a very privileged, like, you know, God has given me a privilege to be called, you know, his sons and daughter. So I'm his daughter because like, you know, Jesus, he crucified, he sacrificed his life for us. I mean, that's really amazing. No one will, no one, no one can't do that because he himself is the only one, uh, you know, can give us new life so for me like you know god has given me new life in this, in this pandemic like you know to know more about him to come closer to him so we, he paid for you know price for us you know he, he suffered a lot i mean i mean i mean I, I would say like you know he's a wonderful god like you know uh he's our savior he's the truth you know he's the bread of life lord god yes father lord and lord you took upon the the lord the punishment of our sins lord god father we we thank you lord god that that was not the end lord god but lord on on the third day lord you rose again lord and now we have this hope of resurrection lord god lord that lord that lord you would you have given us new life lord and this one lord which we have received lord god by your grace lord we thank you lord god for all that you've done for us lord so father god we thank you lord for your sacrifice and for the hope of resurrection father we pray lord god in these times lord Help us, Lord, to focus on what you have done for us, Lord God. And may we realize, Lord God, and Lord, know it fully, Lord God, what you have done for each one of us, Lord God, in our own lives, Father. So we give you thanks and we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We just pray for our, our schools, Lord. We just so thankful for giving us all these facilities, Lord. Our children can go to school safely, Lord. And we just bring all the school staff into your hand as well, Lord. You bless them, Lord, and keep them safe, Lord. Um, we ask for your blessings upon them, Lord. We pray for our um, the, the country we live in, Lord. We pray for the, the prime minister and the people who are involved in running the country, Lord. You give them your wisdom, Lord. Because without your wisdom, Lord, it's not even possible to do anything at all. So we commit each one of them into your hand as well, Lord. We commit the NHS into your, uh, into your hand, Lord. All the doctors and nurses and people who are working towards this, Lord. We just um, uh, commit them into your hand as well, Lord. All our worries, all our cares, all our wants, all our desires, we submit it into your hands, Heavenly Father. You lead us on, Lord. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, there is hope at the end of this, Heavenly Father. And we pray, loving Father, when we come to the other side, we would hold on to those values and to those teachings that you have taught us, Heavenly Father, to focus on what is important, loving Father, to keep the important thing the important thing and not to be lost among the things that are insignificant, Heavenly Father. 
Lord, this pandemic has taught us the value of relationship, Heavenly Father. This pandemic has taught us of the value of spending time together, Heavenly Father. This pandemic has also taught us that there are so many things that we give so much importance to which are actually worthless, Heavenly Father. So as we come to the other side, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to keep the important things, the important things, and to focus on those important things, Heavenly Father, and to focus on those relationships, Heavenly Father, to come besides each other, Heavenly Father, and to help each other, Lord, through our journey, Heavenly Father. Be with us, Lord. We submit everything into thy hands. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you, we worship you, and we give all the glory to you, God. We thank you for the opportunity given to us for this Resurrection Sunday to give, give all the praise and worship to you, God. We thank you for your mercy, your love, and your kindness for us, God. We, we, we praise you and worship you as a prayer warrior group and as a Sun Beach West Baptist Church, God. We, we praise you and worship you and we give all the glory to you. We thank you for your mercy and your kindness to on all our prayer warrior families and each and every family member of Tanvi Jewish Baptist Church, Lord. We thank you without your love and kindness, it wasn't possible to go through that pandemic door, but you have so which you have show us your kindness, your mercy throughout every day and throughout the year, Lord. And we are putting each and every person in your, in your, under your cross cord, the, the hope, the, the glory and the love you have shown us through that love of cross cord. I wonder whether we are embarking on a new era here in United Kingdom. We did so after the Second World War, where everybody was affected by it and great changes took place. Well, I'm wondering with this pandemic that we just had and we're beginning to come out of, we've all been affected. We've all gone through the storm, even if we haven't been in the same boat. I've asked a few people how they would like to see God's world on the other side of the pandemic. Let's listen to them. The pandemic has made us realise that we are globally completely connected. So I would, I would say that after the pandemic, I would like us all to stand up and campaign for um, a fair world where people are paid properly for the goods they produce, uh, where farmers can farm in an environmentally friendly and protective manner, uh, and they don't have to choose between food or health care or education. So that's my vision for, for um, after the pandemic, a fairer world, fair trade for everyone as standard. Climate change is such a massive subject, um, it's very hard to know what you can do individually. We can't just run out and buy an electric car and reduce our carbon footprint. So I would say small steps. Let's think about, do we need to make a car journey? Could we walk down the shops? Could we turn that light off? Could we turn the radio off if we're not listening to it? The one thought that came to me quite strongly through this was Zoom. A lot of people, I understand, who weren't interested in Christian matters before, and were not church attenders, took to using this new device and it has resulted in many lives being changed for the good. My hope and prayer will be that those people will continue to listen to Zoom and then start coming to church in person when possible as restrictions are lifted and go on to become church members and committed Christians. Amen. Ending food poverty. Revival. After lockdown and hoping to see God's world for the people seeking for justice and equality. After lockdown, I'm hoping to live in a world where people are based off their morals and respect for others. I also think it's important for us to live in a world where people are not judged based off stigmas and stereotypes as we're all made in God's image. Anecdotally, I think we've seen with this pandemic that sadly more people have been drawn into addiction. And what I want everyone to know is that our experience of the recovery course has shown us that God can heal the deep pain in the lives of so many people and it's that pain that draws them into addiction. I've got mixed feelings about the pandemic. 
on the good side, it's created more time for us and I've had more time to spend with God, which has been great. But what I've really missed is people. Um, Zoom couldn't compensate for actual natural relationships with people. And my hope for the future is that we as a church can build community of people um, for ourselves and for the wider community. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Everything changed on that Easter weekend. It was a, a pivotal event in the history of humanity and the world. On the Friday, Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, probably just outside uh, of the walls of Jerusalem by the Ganeth Gate, so that everybody could see him as they came into and out of the city. Then Jesus was taken down from the cross and Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus kindly picked him up and took him about 50 feet to a tomb where they put him inside, wrapped him up in cloth and then later the tomb was sealed over by a huge stone. In that time the tomb would have been sealed in order to make sure that nobody broke it for it was a criminal offence for such a thing to happen. You can actually go today and look at the place where Jesus was crucified and also where he was buried. As I said, they're about 50 foot apart. It was an old burial site for Jewish people. Today it's covered by a church, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And actually it was about in 2016 when they were renovating uh, Jesus' tomb uh, they took off the stone and they looked and examined the first century tomb that is there today. So, the question we have to ask ourselves today is, why did Jesus die? Why did he have that painful death? Well, as we understand from scriptures and as we examine, Jesus wanted to deal with all the sin and destruction in his very broken world throughout all generations and we're aware that no one has ever been exempt from sin there has only been one perfect person that's Jesus Christ himself and therefore he was the ideal person for God to ask his son to die in our place yes Jesus paid the price he paid the penalty for our sin overcoming the pollution and the power of sin being that perfect sacrifice without blemish. And that's why it's a game changer. Humanity now has the ability to know that their sins can be forgiven, that they can say sorry and they can leave it behind and seek to live a better life. We read in 1 Peter 3 verse 18, Christ suffered for our, all our sins once for all time. He himself never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. And so throughout every generation and every century, it's the same Easter message. God invites us to turn away from our sin, to turn away from all that is wrong and unhelpful and destructive. 
And he invites you and I to do that. And this is an individual decision, but of course it's also a corporate decision as we seek, as he seeks to make this a better world. But it doesn't finish on Good Friday, of course, with his burial. Today it's Easter Sunday. And on Easter Sunday, we are remembering the resurrection of Jesus Christ, where he got up and went out of that sealed tomb before the angels opened the tomb. He had a very different physical appearance. No wonder Mary Magdalene, when they first saw him, thought he was a gardener. Or the disciples took a while to recognize him in the upper room. The two men on the road to Emmaus took a while, as did others in this time on earth after the resurrection. Even though they eventually they ate with him, they talked with him, they could have touched him. Because you can imagine watching Jesus, as they did, die a terrible death on that cross, and then seeing unmistakably him alive and radically transformed into a glorious new kind of life. This literally changed everything. I am going to suggest rather than a new era, it was pushing a massive reset button on a cosmic sail. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he brought the whole person of Jesus back to life, his heart, his mind, his soul, and his body. And this is promised to all who want to follow in his footsteps. Jesus himself said this, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he dies, will live again. I'm sure you may be like some of the people in Corinth who asked the question, how are the dead raised? What kind of body will they come with? And this is Paul's response. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps a wheat or something else. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor and it's raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body and it's raised in a spiritual body. And so it is, we can follow Jesus Christ as we live on our earth with our natural body as we die, we then take on our new life and eventually our resurrection body as Jesus has. He was the first fruit, but we are invited to join him in that. And so as we turn from sin, as we turn from that which is destructive and debilitating, as we turn from the things that make us feel really bad and guilty, we don't just turn from it, we also want to turn to. Today is all about looking forward. We've heard it from what people have already said, what they're looking forward to as we come out of the pandemic, what they would love to see happen in God's world. Well, today we too can look forward. We can look to turning to become a follower of Jesus. And we're invited to that. Jesus first said to his own disciples, repent turn from your sin believe the good news and then come and follow me and we are invited to become followers of jesus christ and what that means is to become a follower of jesus christ is not so much about his teachings although of course they are very important it's much more about having a living relationship with jesus christ who then gives us his spirit, the spirit of Christ, that can dwell within us by faith. So as we say sorry for our wrong, he doesn't leave a vacuum. As we, because as we say yes to Jesus, he says, yes, I welcome you. I welcome you. I will now give you my spirit so that we can be one together. Jesus with you. 
and then you will become an adopted son or daughter, as it says in 1 John 3, 2 and 3. And as you become an adopted daughter, as you receive the Spirit of God, as you receive your adoption, as you become born again, a, a, a new being, and many of you I know of you have experienced that, you become increasingly like Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll throw out this question. I'm even wondering whether we become more like Christ in nature, because we become organically one, but also in nurture. Because the nurture is that we become more like him in character, because we take on his characteristics of all the beautiful fruits of the Spirit, as we seek to serve him and honour him and to follow him. I was also reflecting on my own walk with Jesus Christ. I've been following him now for over 40 years. I'm going to suggest that I actually believe I have a chemistry with Jesus Christ, my friend, my saviour and my Lord. Why do I say that? Well, you see, Jesus Christ knows me. He knows me intimately. He knows every part of my being. He knows how I think. He knows how I function. He knows my inner anxieties. He knows my inner pain. He knows what I've gone through and he knows what I will be going through. And because he is God, he meets me where I am at within who I am. So there just has to be a chemistry there. It's the most amazing relationship in life that you can have here on earth. There is nothing that even begins to equal that life and, uh, and friendship we can have with Jesus Christ. I dare say, and I use this cautiously, he's like a soulmate. I don't even have to verbalise what I'm thinking because he already knows. I don't even have to tell him my woes or my issues in life or what I'm struggling with or how I've been misunderstood or how I've been a victim of something. I don't need to tell him. He knows. And I can just come to him and I, I can bore my head out or I can laugh with him. I can share with him and he goes with me every step of the way. I cannot think on this Resurrection Sunday of a deeper and more special relationship. And that is with Jesus Christ, our Creator, and I am the Creator. So please don't misunderstand me. I know my place. He is my Father. I am His Son. You are His son or daughter, should you choose and continue to follow Him. He is the Creator. We are the Creator. But we can have this incredible relationship. And he's not just ask, inviting us here in, in Tamil Rose Baptist Church. This is happening throughout the world this Easter weekend. Many hundreds, thousands of people will be giving their lives to Jesus Christ and wanting to follow him and, and to do that which he has called them to do. Just one thing. You may be struggling with a bit of doubt. There may be questions you still have. May I suggest that doesn't stop you having a relationship with him. My experience, I've got to know lots of people. I just love being with people. I, I, and, I get, and I walk with them and we have a good time together. I have questions. I have things I don't understand. But that doesn't stop me developing a relationship with that person. The longer you know somebody, the better you get to know them. The longer I get to know Jesus, the the longer I am with Jesus, the better I get to know him. But I still have my own questions. It's a bit like the person in the Bible whose son had, was needed the healing of Jesus. And he asked Jesus this very simple question. Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Everything is possible for the one who believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And I'm going to suggest you can have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. You become a follower of him and still have doubts. That is okay. He loves honesty. What he's looking for is allegiance. What he's looking for is for commitment and people who seek to honour him in their lives. My experience in watching others, the closer and the longer you walk with the Lord, the, the, the doubts become less and less, and you grow 
in depth of your relationship and love for him. But many of us, even till the time we end our lives, have doubts. Because God is bigger than us and we're smaller, so how can we all understand him completely? So please, it's very hard for us in the West because we want to be able to understand everything and have, be in control of everything. But when you're dealing with the infinite God, there will always be things you will not understand. There will be things that you may doubt with our limited thinking. What's important is you seek to follow him and obey him and enjoy all that he has for you. As the Spirit of God comes to you, he draws himself to you, he wants to help you in your weakness, to become a stronger person. Just read Romans 8, such a thick, wonderful thing. And as you grapple with life and the complexity of life, the Holy Spirit will help you more accurately play, pray closer to what God thinks is best for you in your situation. So this today is an invitation, as it will be throughout the world, for people to say, yes, I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes, I want to turn from the past, I want to turn from that which is wrong, and turn to him, the living God. We're going to go now back into the sanctuary. And as we go back, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond, either to come to Jesus Christ for the first time. Some of you may want to just renew your relationship with him. And for others, there'll be other opportunities as well. But come, let's go back to the sanctuary and join Dennis. We've been hearing about Jesus rising from the dead. And as I was thinking about this morning, this verse came to mind. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. That's 1 Peter 1 verse 21. So I was thinking, what do you go through? And you may be saying, well, that's obvious. We go through do doors all the time. And I thought, yes, we do. And uh, this is talking about Christ, going through Christ to God. So I was wondering if there may be somebody out watching the service this morning who's thinking, I'm wondering whether uh, I will have a look at what it is to become a Christian. I'm listening this Easter Sunday. I'm watching what's going on, and I'm beginning to open the door of my heart. And there may be others of you this morning who went to Sunday school, or maybe have heard about Jesus at school, and others too that may be just flicking through this morning right now, and you're seeing uh, this message, and you're thinking, actually, I remember when I loved Jesus and I followed him. And actually, I think he's calling me back. So you're opening the door of your heart too. And this verse says, and you have placed your faith and hope in God. And I wondered if there may be somebody out watching this morning that's thinking, actually, my faith is pretty down. It's low. Um, Jesus says, doesn't it, that we only need the faith as small as a grain of mustard seed. So we don't need lots of faith. Um, you may also feel that you have lost a sense of hope. So Jesus is inviting us this morning, the risen Lord, to him to renew our faith and hope. So you may be also beginning to open the door. And when I look through the door, and when you look through the door, we see the cross, because it says, through Christ, you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. So the invitation is to come, to come to Christ. He never expects us to do any of this on our own. He says, come, will you come? I'd like to pray if that's okay. So let's, let's pray. So, first of all, I just want to pray for 
Anyone who's watching today who uh, has heard the invitation from Jesus to come to him, just want you to, right where you are, to, to open up your, your heart to him, to just say what's, what's in your mind, to, to just say that you, you want to know him, that you are uh, sorry for those things in your life that you have done wrong, and that right now, that you want to receive him into your life. So I ask, Lord God, that you would come by your Holy Spirit and that you would meet each person that is committing their life to you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to pray for anyone that's watching who has had faith, and over the years, it uh, somewhere it, it, it was lost, and that today you're saying, actually, on Resurrection Sunday, you would like to recommit your life to Christ. So if that's okay, I would like to pray. So Father, we thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. And once we receive you, we are always children of God. So I just pray right now, Father, for those that are known to you, that are listening this morning, who have opened their hearts and their hands, that they've said, Lord, I would love you to be back in my life. I'm here. I'm also sorry for those things that I've done, for walking away, but I would like to come back this morning and receive you fully into my life again. So again, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to touch each one, that you would fill them afresh with your love, your peace, and your joy. May they experience you right now, wherever they are. Amen. And then, if you're feeling like your faith is wobbly right now, and maybe hope is a little thin as well, could I pray for you too, please? So let's pray. Father, I just pray for anyone who's watching or here in the building this morning, whose faith and hope is, is, is not where it was, that they've been shaken, and I pray, Father God, that you would come now in the power of your Holy Spirit and that you would fill them afresh with your love, your faith, your hope, and a new trust, a renewed trust in you. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. 
As we come to the end of our service together, may you receive the words that Paul gave to the church in Rome. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither the height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So go out into your week with confidence that Christ is with you and he will fill you with his spirit for you to do all that he's asking you to do in his power and for his glory. God bless you. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.